Okay, let's talk about depression and perimenopause. Marching through all of our, our reproductive life cycles. The perimenopause is a window of vulnerability, right? We all know this in the development of depressive symptoms because we remember that reproductive life cycle. Most midlife women who experience a major depressive episode during perimenopause have experienced a prior episode of depression, okay? So screening for depression is important and it's helpful to understand that this is a recurrence. It might be a recurrence of a pre-existing condition. If there's inconsistent evidence of an increased risk in women without depression prior to midlife. The data are a little bit mixed to kind of spontaneously have depression as soon as you hit menopause. What are some other risk factors? Mental health factors that we talked about like prior depression, current use of antidepressants, anxiety. There are sociodemographic factors, psychosocial factors, and menopausal symptoms. So hot flashes, sleep dysfunction can set you up. There's a very important overlap, again, between depression and the symptoms of menopause. And that might cause us all to scratch our heads and wonder, is this really depression or are we talking about menopause or are we talking about both? So I like this Venn diagram because it helps you see where the overlap in symptoms might be. Okay? Cognitive shifts, sleep disturbances, sexual disturbances, energy changes and weight changes all happen in both. So really useful, again, to understand how these overlap and how they differentiate or distinguish. What do you do with menopause? First line treatments for a major depressive episode during menopause are antidepressants, cognitive behavioral therapy, and other psychotherapies, data on SSRIs and SNRIs show good efficacy and safety at usual doses. We got some tools that we know work. SSRIs and SNRIs are also really helpful for improving menopausal related complaints like vasomotor symptoms and pain. And you've got an FDA indication for vasomotor symptoms associated with menopause with Paxil or paroxetine and desvenlafaxine also has strong data supporting use for this particular indication, okay? In women with a history of depression, a prior adequate response to a particular antidepressant should guide treatment selection. Something worked before, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's try something new. Um, if, if something in the past hasn't worked. Other things to think about, estrogen therapy is effective for managing depression with uh, symptoms in perimenopausal women with or without the vasomotor symptoms. And it's not effective for managing depressive disorders in postmenopausal therapy. So helpful to understand, good for symptoms, not for the disorder. Hormonal or contraceptives like when used continuously may improve symptoms in women approaching menopause. And it's not unreasonable to recommend exercise, of course, again, particularly in combination with psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy.